Hi there, we're the Clarks, and we are really excited that you've rented our RV for your upcoming adventure. The purpose of these videos is to show you how our favorite toy works and how you can have a great time while making sure you're using the equipment properly and safely. Let's get started. Yeah. All right, well, we have here a Mini Winnie uh, 31K, which means it's 31 feet long. The 2017, so you enjoy all the most modern features that Winnebago has released for this line. We're gonna do a real, real quick tour of the outside, what is in each of the compartments, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and show you uh, so that way we're covering things in specific after that. But yeah, let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna start with the simplest thing, which is the key ring, because there are four keys here, and you should know what they all do. Uh, so the following four keys are the ones you're gonna be using. This all silver key with the square is your outside storage key. It opens up all the outside storage bins, uh, which they should all be locked when you receive the RV. We ask that, this, that all the storage bins do remain locked while traveling. Our next key is the Ford key. This will open up the cab doors as well as to the ignition of the, of the vehicle. So that's when you'll use that one. The next two keys are for the side entrance. This is for the deadbolt, the wide, wider key, and the short round one is for the door lock. So that's what you can use all these keys for. So this side is the utility side of the RV. Here we have things that you're gonna be using to hook up at your campsite, or what you'll wanna be making sure that you're using when you set up the RV, as well as when you take it down and wanna dump the tanks. So this first storage compartment here, this is where we keep all of our hoses as well as um, our things that we use for dumping. So you go ahead and just pop it in here and unlock it. You twist that and it'll open up. In here, we have our essential hoses. So we have here two hoses for you to use. First is this blue hose. This hose should only be used when dumping your waste tanks. Do not use this for your drinking water. This hose here is the drinking water hose, the white one with the blue stripe. On one end, we have what we call the city water regulator. This is what you put onto the spigot at the campsite in order to regulate the water pressure. It's really important in RVs that the water pressure coming in isn't too hard. So at campsites, because it's quite variable, you'll put this onto the spigot and then you'll screw it onto your hose. That way, if there's really hard water pressure at, at the campsite, which many of them have, this will slow it down to not damage the pipes inside of the RV. And you simply hook it to the spigot, the hose to the regulator, and then the hose to the spot I'll show you just in the back. That's what we have here. In here, we also have a very important piece of equipment, which is the surge protector. The surge protector is what you're gonna use, like you use at home for any electronic device that you value. It prevents any power surges to the power podium at a campsite from overloading, overloading the circuitry. So it's really important when you get to a campsite, if you're gonna hook up to power, that this end goes into the power podium, and then you plug actually into this end with the electrical system. So that's the, the surge protector. Make sure you're using this. And these are the things that we keep in this. We have two other important pieces of equipment, which we'll cover. These are the two other pieces of equipment that you find in the storage bin. Both of them are the elbow junctions for the dump hose. This is the clear junction that you attach to the actual outlet on the trailer so you can see if there's still waste coming through. This end you'll attach to the end of the hose that's going into the actual dump receiver. You'll be using these both in conjunction with the dump hose, which is held inside of the trailer bumper, which we'll show you in a minute. But we, after we wash these out after each dump and we put them back here in the front storage compartment. In our next storage compartment, we have actually the generator access. This portal, you as a renter, should not need to access. But if for some reason, uh, something were to happen, we would need you to access it, this is where it is. As you can come and see, this is the faceplate to the Cummins generator that will make sure that even if you're dry camping, you're gonna have AC in your hot days, as well as having something to power your TV when your kids wanna watch something on the road. So that's the generator. 
but the access to the electrical system is actually in the next compartment. In here, we have two piece, important pieces of equipment. One is our power plug, and our other is our adapter. This is a 30 volt system, uh, 30 amp system, sorry. Um, and this is what you'd be using to plug into the surge protector at a campsite if it has hookups. Let's say you're camping though outside of grandma's house and she doesn't probably have a 30 amp hookup at her house. That's why we provide you an adapter. This is a standard adapter that will take it down to a 15 amp circuit so that you can plug in when staying with relatives right into their wall. So the way you can power the system all the time. We recommend, if you can, to use an exterior power source as we do charge for extra generator hours on your rental. But that is how you access both these things. This cord is about 20 feet long. So if you have to be a little bit far away from the power source, no worries, it does pull out quite a bit. Not only are you gonna want electricity when you're camping in your RV, but chances are you're gonna wanna take a shower and use the restroom. In order for that to happen, you're gonna need water. Our RV has a water tank, as well as the ability to hook into a water system. So if you're at a campsite that provides water, like I mentioned earlier, you can use the white hose with the blue stripe to connect to your water source. And then you take the other one and you attach it here. City fill. This is, if you have an active water line that you wanna have run water to this system, you simply connect it here, you put the hose up, and then you actually turn this to tighten it on. And this is what you do, what you use, if you're connected to an active water source. But let's say you're out going up high in the mountains or out in the desert where you're not gonna have water spigot to use, and you wanna use the tank of water in, on the RV. There's 40 gallons of fresh water that you can carry, and you fill that 40 gallons here, and the tank fill. Simply attach it here, turn on your hose at home or wherever you're filling up, and let it fill. You'll know it's done filling when water starts to spill underneath the RV. That the RV has an, an automatic shunt so that it, any extra water just falls out of the system rather than it breaking anything. So no worries about that. We also have here a cable tie-in. I personally have never used this as when I go camping, I usually don't want to catch the local news. I'm trying to escape it all. But if you'd like and you want to watch some TV, this can be used to tie into any cable system that uses a coaxial cable. Also, your RV is going to need to be fueled up. We're always going to provide you an RV that's tip top full of gasoline so you can leave our house immediately for your adventure. But you're going to need to fill it up um, you have, certainly before you return it. And where you do that is here. There's a standard gas cap and this takes standard gasoline. So you're normal unleaded. Um, it does have a 55 gallon tank on it and the gasoline tank feeds not only the motor of the RV but also your generator which you can have you have both running at the same time. So if you're going out to the desert or high up in the mountains, chances are if you have a full tank while you're there, you'll easily go a week feeding the generator just on this tank. No problem. We've enjoyed this so much. All right, so now we're going to talk about the part that might, you might be the most nervous about with your RV rental. I know I was certainly nervous about it when I first got into the RV lifestyle, and uh, actually it's not that big of a deal, and that is dumping your tanks. Now all campers and trailers have two tanks. One called the black tank and the other called the gray. To make it simple, everything from your toilet goes to your black tank. Everything from any sink or shower goes into the gray tank. So we're gonna explain to you really quickly the order of operations of how you do a waste dump. Now, the way you do the dump is here on this end. Uh, there is the big outlet with the cover and the two levers. When you receive our RV for the rental, those levers are gonna be pushed all the way up, meaning that they are closed. It is really important that you do not want any waste getting into your outlet before you're ready to have it go there. So, we provide you some equipment to provide the, to do that dump. First, you'll wanna get the clear elbow, as we mentioned from the front compartment, and the gray elbow. You'll attach, you'll take off the lid by simply turning, which may require some force, <clears throat> And pulling it off, you'll attach your clear elbow. Next, you'll go to the bumper. In the bumper, we have the sewage hose. We actually have two in here, but chances are you only need one. Pull off the bumper cap, place it there, and go ahead and remove your hose. We provide hose covers so that we know nasty smells get out of there. But go ahead and take off the cover, 
attach the end to the clear hose, the other end to the gray elbow, and then you're gonna be ready to dump. Now it's important, there's actually a specific order of operations which you wanna dump. First, you'll wanna empty your black tank. While your black tank's empty, you'll actually wanna use what we call the Santee flush. We have a system in order to prevent any bad smells from entering our RV of basically a water sprayer inside of the black tank. So you attach the solid blue hose to here to a water source, which is probably provided at the dump site that you're using. You turn on the water and this begins to roto-rooter inside the black water tank. And you open up the black water tank and all that waste will start coming out. After you give that, after you notice through the clear elbow, that looks like most of it has gone through, you go ahead and turn off the water coming to this anti flush and give it about another two or three minutes for it to finish getting any little other drops of water it may have out. Once that's done, you will turn off and push back in the black water. And then you'll pull and release the gray water. The gray water will then flush out through the system. There is no Santee flush for that. And this can take much longer as the gray water tank is slightly bigger. But once you see through the clear elbow that all of the waste is gone, shut the gray water tank by pushing that lever back up and in, and then giving a couple minutes for the last drips to come out. When it's finally done, make sure before you drive away that you cap this as federal laws state <clears throat> that if a state trooper were to pull you over with that off, you can be fined up $20,000, which makes your fun family vacation and you're not so much fun of an experience. But yeah, that's how you dump the tank. It's quite easy. I do recommend having some gloves, disposable gloves with you when doing this, as you probably don't want to eat lunch until you at least wash your hands. But that is how you dump water out of the system. All right, back here we have one of my favorite parts of the trailer, which is the basement of the trailer, of the RV. This is a very large storage area where you can take all the fun stuff that make camping so much fun. If you look here, you have a very spacious space. And back here, we do provide some important essentials. First, in a cardboard box there to the left, we will provide the toilet paper needed to be used in the RV. So if you ever run out, please do not use any of your own. Please use only the toilet paper that we provide. We also provide leveling blocks found back there. As you can see here, it's also good for other miscellaneous camping equipment such as lanterns, Dutch ovens, charcoal, squirt guns, shovels. Well, you, usually we carry easy ups, we carry tables, um, camping chairs, pretty much you name it, and chances are you could fit it back here. This is a great area. This will almost always be empty of everything except for leveling blocks and the toilet paper. So that way you can plan to put your luggage back here. If you do choose to purchase any of our additional add-ons that we have available for rental, such as the touch oven equipment, the easy up, the table, anything that we provide, we will, before your rental, make sure that they are stored here inside of the basement of the RV. I do want to make quick mention of the ladder here on the back of the RV. This is the access to the roof. We actually ask that no renter use this ladder in any capacity, not to hang things on or to use to get to the roof. Uh, getting onto the roof will most certainly cause damage, and so we ask that no one use these, as this can only be used by people who are making repairs and those who are qualified to use it. Uh, any damage from the ladder will incur additional costs. All right, so this side of the RV is more storage. These things are great for packing a full of fun toys you might have. This storage here is a side access to that same underside basement. That way you don't need to crawl around from the back just to get these things that are here on this side. But we also have here our tire safety things. So we have here some more additional leveling box as well as wheel chocks. We recommend you use wheel chocks no matter where you're camping, whether you're perfectly level or if you're on a little bit of a slope. Uh, it's really important that you have a level vehicle for your water to drain correctly, as well as the comfort of sleeping. You'd be surprised how poorly you can sleep if you're sleeping slightly with all your blood rush, either rushing to your feet or to your head. So make sure your vehicle is level when you park it for your camping trip. But we provide you wheel chocks and leveling here in this compartment. Then in this fork compartment, we use this one merely for chair storage. It's pretty much the perfect storage area for 
having chairs, but anything else you might want to fit there like charcoal or additional toys will easily fit here as well. These are a lot deeper than they look, so you'd be surprised what you could fit in here. Our last compartment is our propane compartment. We have the propane turned on for you when you begin your rental. Propane is used for two things. One, the furnace, and the second thing is your refrigerator. I know it's... Stove. And the stove, three things. Um, the propane, you really sip when you use it. So even if it looks like you have a little amount left, it'll take you a long distance. We will always ensure to make, uh, make sure they have enough propane that will easily fit the length of your trip when you rent it. But you should not need to access this as it will be turned on. If you were to turn it off though, this is the access point. One of the other awesome things about the outdoor the RV is the large awning that we have on this side. To extend your awning, make sure that the RV is parked and you're in the place you want to camp. And then simply hit the button here, the awning button, for out. This will automatically extend the awning out to its full length. You'll see and know that it is done when there is a little flap of cloth at the very end of the awning that appears. When that appears, you can go ahead and call it good. This provides a lot of great shade for those mornings and afternoons when it gets a little hot. One more important note about the awning. The awning is not protected by your rental insurance as your rental contract states. Any damage to the awning, the full cost of repair will be incurred to you. So keep in mind, if it's a very windy day, it's probably not a good idea to have that awning out. Or if something were to happen for it, understand that you are responsible for the full cost of repair. We're going to show you the panel that has all of the electrical and water information that you can control from inside the RV. This is also where your generator is housed and how you start it up and where you can test for the levels, turn on the water pump um, and the water heater. So the first thing we're going to show you is how to work the generator portion of the panel. Um, to turn the generator on, there's a couple steps that you have to do. First thing you're going to do is hit the stop side of the switch and hold it down until you see numbers appear here. Once they've appeared, you select start and hold it until you hear the engine turn over. This may take a couple of times to do, so don't get frustrated if it doesn't turn. Hold it for a second and then go ahead and let it go and try again. Um, we, If you have questions about this process, we can show you in person. This is the one that people get a little afraid of. Uh, the next portion of the panel are these three buttons. The water heater, whether you're turning it on or off, is our first one. You select on. When the pilot uh, out button goes off, it should be ready to use. Um, it'll also be green while it's on. Anytime you want heated water, that will need to be on. The next is the levels test. Now this is where the bottom portion of this comes in. When you push on this button, it'll show you where the levels are on the RV. The first section is the black water tank. You'll always start the trip empty as we empty this for you, if it has not been emptied already. Gray water, which is your uh, sink water, shower water, all that good stuff, also should be empty when you receive it and will need to be empty before you leave. Fresh water. Now, uh, if you're going to go somewhere without water available, you'll want to fill this up and you can check how much you have. Um, otherwise, it will be empty. LP gas. Um, as mentioned in an earlier video, this really uh, is sipped as it's used. So a third of a tank will get you pretty far, but we make sure that you'll have enough for your trip every time. And then the last section here is the battery charged amount. Um, this will should be full for you when you take off. The next button is the water pump. You only want to turn this on when you're using the fresh water tank and you're not hooked up to any water source. Um, so you'll press this button to turn it on. It will tell you when it's on and that's how your water will actually flow through the system appropriately. If you're taking your trip during the summer, you shouldn't need to use this button. However, if you're going during the winter, select this button to warm the holding tank heater. This will make it so that your water flows appropriately and doesn't freeze. The next two things we're going to go over is how to give yourself a little more space in the RV. So once you're parked and the emergency brake is on, you can pop out the slide. To do so, you'll need to insert the key 
into the ignition and turn it. You don't need to start the engine, just place it so that it's in the on position. Then you'll use this button up here to actually put the slide in or out. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. If you want it to go out, you're going to press it up and it'll start to move. Um, you'll notice that this makes some creaks and groans as it's moving out. That's totally to be expected. You're going to hold this button down until it's all the way extended. Do not leave this half extended at any point that will cause damage to the RV. So hold it and keep going. No one sits on it. And ensure that no one is sitting on the slide as it moves, as that will also cause damage. It has moved all the way out, so I've taken my hand off the button and it should be good to go. And I have suddenly a lot more room. Uh, let's talk through some of the amenities that come with this RV. We've got lots of cool features in it, like we have a 32 inch TV. Yes, <laughs> we have a 32 inch TV with a DVD player right here. Uh, the DVD player does connect to both the TV here in the front and the TV in the bedroom that we'll show you. So just keep that in mind. But we have um, with the t with the TV, we also have an input switch here. So you're, if you're bringing any fun consoles or a DVD player of your own or anything like that, you can directly plug it in right here, easy peasy, with an HDMI cord. Um, this RV comes with a lot of storage, and we provide certain kitchen utensils. So we have a basic pots and pans set, some trays, some mixing things. All of that is stored up here in the kitchen storage units. Here in the lower storage cabinets, we also have everything that you'll need for your trip as far as the kitchen goes. So we have large cooking utensils and cutting boards, as well as some um, cutlery options. And then we have plates and bowls and cups enough to serve eight. Um, you're more than welcome to bring your own paper products, but we do provide this here for you. Uh, we also have all the amenities you would need for a kitchen. So we have a fully functioning microwave. You do have to be either plugged into power or running the generator to use this. Uh, we do have a stove that uses propane, a three burner stove with a small oven. Um, here you'll find additional kitchen storage and what's really cool about these is that all of the drawers pull out. So everything that you need to access is really easy to get into. Um, there is also a fridge here. Now this can either run on the propane or it can run on electricity depending on what's easier for you to access wherever you are. Um, in order for it to run on electricity it either needs to be plugged in or you need to have the generator running. Otherwise you'll want to set it to LP. The best option to really go with is to just select auto. This will ensure that the fridge knows which to use whichever works best for your situation in the moment. Um, but as you can see, these are pretty spacious for an RV. And there's a fridge and a freezer up here and a large storage compartment that you can put things in as well. On the comfier side of things, you'll see that we have a full table set and a couch uh, for you to be able to use throughout your time. Both of these things can be made into beds for additional sleeping areas. Um, and they both come equipped with seat belts for while you're driving. This table section has three, two on the sides and one in the middle here. Uh, the sofa section has two seat belts available for it. Um, as I stated, these can be made into beds. We'll show you what those look like folded down. To fold the, t the table down into a bed, you're basically going to, before I'll talk you through it before I actually do it, remove the top, take the stick out, and then place the top back down in the slot. So, to remove the top, there is a knob underneath that you'll loosen until the table can swing. You want to loosen that up, and then the top should pull right on off. And you can see exactly where the stick goes. Take that, and we're going to pull the stick out. Aha. The stick comes out, it can be placed below, and then the table sits on the edge of the couch. You may need to move the cushions around a little bit to get it to seat. 
there it goes. But as you can see, there's a ridge for it to sit into. You'll know it's in the right place when it's flush with this. And then all this cushion here and sorry we can the two arm cushions there form it into a perfect bed this couch folds down into a bed kind of like a futon there's a latch a black latch here that you can pull that will release it and allow it to fold flat so now you have a lot of sleeping space uh, while you're driving, this overhead bunk space makes a really good storage compartment, but at night, it's an awesome, awesome bed. So in order to pull it down, the first thing we're going to do is move the ladder. This is how you'll actually access it once it's pulled down, but for now I just want it out of the way. You're going to take this cushion up here and flip it over so that you have the hard side down and the soft side up. To do that, you're going to pull it forward flip it over and slide it back into place. So now you have a equivalent of a queen size bed up here in the front. To access the bed, it'll take the ladder, hook it into these slots, and you should be good to go. You'll want to make sure that any kids accessing this bed can safely climb up and down the ladder on their own. In the RV, you'll also find a ton of books and games up here that you are more than welcome to use. Um, additionally, an additional storage for you, there's also DVDs for anything that you'd like to watch. We also have a couple of safety features over here. Up above is a first aid kit. This should have some basic bandages and things like that. We also have a fire extinguisher. This should be used anytime you are having a fire in your car. Which is hopefully never. Which is hopefully never. Another important storage container is the one found here. This is great for storing, but also houses the instruction manual for the RV. In this case, here. So if you have any questions or we ask you to refer to the manual during any problems, this is where that can be found. Now I'll tell you about the features on the back half of the RV. We have a fully functioning shower as well as a small bathroom with a toilet and sink. Uh, remember to use special toilet paper as outlined in previous vi videos. Do not bring your own from home. We have provided the special toilet paper both in the bathroom and in the basement of the trailer if you're missing any. Um, there's also a full queen size bed in this bedroom back here. Um, we provide linens as well as pillows, but if you'd like to bring your own, this is a standard queen size bed. We also have, there's a TV, a 24 inch TV for your viewing pleasure, uh, as well as plenty of storage space down in the cabinets here and up above, like so.